you YouTube I'm back another video update here we go people always wonder what can I get out of a small portable system well let's give you the lowdown on what you can get to expect out of this system this is my small portable one I got 300 watts of solar panel sitting up there I also got 45 watts of the Harbor Freight disconnect you already seen that in the last video here we come down to the box all right so what can you get out of something like this well if I was a nickel and diamond and try and get every little bit of power I can out of it, I can get about 1,500 watts hours a day out of this system, 1.5 kilowatts. So my 300 watt panels, those things there, they're going to produce about 16 to 1,700 watts. And the 5.5 sun hour adding up configuring, that's what I'm going to get. So on a day I can produce about 1,700 watts. Well, you need to put more power in than you're taking out to charge the batteries. So that's where you come to the 1500. At night, to go at about 30% discharge rate, I get about 500 watt hours, half a kilowatt that I could use at night when the sun's down. And then if I was real frugal about it during the day, I could use another kilowatt during the day because I have enough power coming in to charge my batteries back up to full and use the power. So, that's kind of what you, you get out of this, it's 150 amp hours, and you know I'm going to get probably 1700 watts of power off of my solar panels up here. So realistically, at night, you only want to go down about 30%, so you don't want to go to the full 50, so 30% of my 150 amp hours is about 500 watt hours, about half a kilowatt. So that means I can watch TV for five hours. I could run loads, lighting, and stuff like that. So that's what I have on the home-built system. Now check this out. Here's something new I did. I built this little light right here, right? So I took this little light. It's one of those regular little 12-watt. Uh, 12 it's off for like off-road vehicles. It's LED. I made a little stand. It goes on here. I have a 30-foot extension cord. And over here, off my 12-volt, I have this. So I can just turn that on. Boom, the light is on, nice and bright. And I reach over here, turn it off, turn it off, turn it on. Now here I can light up a whole camp. If I take this thing portable, even in the house, I can drag 30 feet into the house and light up a room. So I can take this with me camping, set it up, light up a whole camp with one amp hour draw per hour. Only drawing one amp per hour is 12 volt. I could run that thing indefinitely pretty much. And that will light up, believe it or not, that'll light up a whole camp. Just what I made right there. Light the whole camp up. That thing's awesome. Let's get back to this now. Right now I'm running a refrigerator. I'm at 12.6. Because I'm running a refrigerator and I'm not putting enough wattage in to cover the load. It's a beer fridge. It takes about 220 watts to run. Right now I'm bringing in about 180. So that's why it's down a little bit on voltage. But... If I take this thing portable, right, now I'm going to go portable with it. Let's take a look inside. Now I'm going to go portable with it. Okay, now what can I run on the thing? Well, I only have a 100 watt solar panel. So I'm only going to produce about 550, 600 watts hours a day. So at night, let's say I run this thing at 500 watts at night, I'm going to need about 750 during the day just to bring those batteries all the way back up to full. So if you think about it, at night, I throw my 100 watt solar panel out there, I'm out camping, whatever, tailgating, so I could run this thing. Now the other benefit of it is, at night, I could probably, I'd probably run about three, 400 watts at night, watt hours. During the day you run a stereo and stuff like that, it's not going to affect it, it'll charge back up. And the beautiful thing about this, so I am camping or whatever, I can just run some jumper cables to my car, start the car up send 50 amps whatever to this thing charge these batteries up really quick so you know if you're running a 100 watt solar panel it changes everything so if i take 500 watt hours out of this thing at night i need about 750 because you got to put more in than you take out to bulk the batteries and get them all the way up so realistically you know you want to have 200 watt solar panels but it'll work okay so i mean it's a decent little system you think about those people who buy those Yetis, Jesus, they spend $2,000.
Yeti's not going to outperform this thing. No way in hell. That thing's going to die out on you and stuff. And these other people who build these other little systems, they say, oh, one battery. Okay, you're going to a camp. I can throw this thing in my car. You take it out of the camp. Boom. You're there. You're not taking a battery that weighs 75 pounds in a battery box five miles down the road to a camp. You're going to camp next to your car. So these people, they take one battery, they put it down, they say, great. Well, if your car is sitting right there, what's in your car? USB ports are in your cars. Every new stereo nowadays comes with a USB port. You could charge your laptop. You can charge your cell phone right off your car. You want to run a little thing? Get a little 100-watt inverter? You can run that off your car. You start that car, start it up, run it for a few minutes here or there, keep the battery topped up. You could run that thing. Put a deep cycle battery in your car. So to build something with one battery that doesn't really charge anything, it's pretty much useless. I mean, to drag that thing around just to charge your cell phone when I could charge it in my car is, is ludicrous. And these people who camp, they're sitting right next to their car. And if you're going long distances and you're hiking down a trail, you surely are not going to carry that battery in a battery box and an inverter and everything with you. Not going to happen. So if you're going to build something, build something kind of decent that you can actually use and power things up and run things and have the amp hour draw and everything else. You need a minimum of at least two batteries. Make it portable on wheels. You can push it around. I wouldn't waste my time building a single battery. I sure the heck wouldn't waste my time spending two grand on a Yeti when you can build something like this for about, well, <clears throat> I did it fairly cheap because I didn't buy a lot of the components. You know, I had a lot of stuff laying around. You can look around. But even if you were, let's say if I was to go out and build something like this, about 750 bucks, maybe 800 to do it really good, you know, and have the capacity and everything like that. Well, that's twelve, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300 off a good Yeti. And that top-of-the-line Yeti is not going to outperform this thing. This will smoke it. I'm telling you that point blank. Well... That's a little lowdown on what you can expect to get out of a little tiny system like this. Now, I hooked it into the house, and I put more panels up because why would you build this thing and not utilize it? You know, if I'm just going to build it and stick it in my garage, my battery's going to drain down. I pull it, pull it out and charge it up every once in a while. It's not doing anything. I mean, here, now I can supplement my other system and run this. I could sit here on the patio. I run the lighting on the patio now instead of running off my other system. So 24 volt at night. This thing literally takes off 400 watt hours a night off that system, which doesn't drain my batteries down as much over there. So it's just a supplement to that. And if the power goes out, hell, now I have two systems. If my inverter takes a dump, I have another system right here going. So eh, something to look at. Well, that's the end of this video right now. Just giving you a lowdown on what to uh, expect if you build something like this and what you can get out of it and uh, kind of the draw you're going to get. So. There you go.